Let's see if I have audio now. Should I have audio? Hall face, how are you? Colleen, no sound. No sound. Do I have sound? Do I have sound now? We can't hear you. It's on now, so I should have sound. Sound, sound, sound. <laughs> Everybody keeps telling me I have no sound. Do I have sound now? No, now I can hear you. Okay, perfect. So we have sound now. I turned it on. I think the kids were at my desk and turned my mic there off. So thanks, Corey, for that. All right, and uh, so starting over again tonight, we're talking about back to school. We're just going to review some of the signs for back to school. We're also going to unofficially, unofficially launch the 100,000 campaign. Tim has been working on that really great. So um, thanks, everybody, for letting me know that the sound wasn't working. That's really great. Okay, and uh, Workout Me 8 is here. Sid, Sid Harth is here. JFS 80. Hi there, Chris. I have my test tomorrow. I'm a little nervous. Yes, Chris, just remember to breathe. Try and get a good night's sleep. Try and have a good breakfast and make sure that you got your two pieces of ID and your license and make sure that you do a pre-trip inspection and Corey will get that video up for you on pre-trip inspection. So, no sound. Uh, Manish, try to re uh, restart your browser and see if that works because everybody else seems to think there's sound. Okay. Okay, Corey is here. Corey's in blue. Bricks for Wheels. Corey is the moderator. Corey is excellent at getting up videos for you that I refer you to for further information when I'm not able to answer a question for you. All phase is here. Hi there, Colleen. Taking my road test tomorrow morning in British Columbia, but ner nervous and trying my best to stay positive. Excellent. That's really great, uh, Colleen Ann. You're going to do great. Okay, uh, Jaden is here. Hall phase, hall phase, and Amber had a question. Amber had a question. She wanted to know when to when she would be ready to take her road test. Now, what I counsel drivers, smart drivers, to do is in the days leading up to their road test, book a practice driving test with a local driving school. That way, you're going to be able to go out with a driving instructor. They're going to be able to give you a mock road test, a practice driving test, and they're going to give you feedback on your skills and abilities and whether you're ready for your test. In doing that, uh, they're also going to tell you whether you're ready to pass or not. And most of the time, you're going to be ready. If you're feeling fairly confident and you think your skills are up, and you've been watching the videos here on the channel as to what you have to do for the purposes of a road test, you're going to be doing really great. So, yes, uh, and Basic Joomla Tutorials is my really good friend, Tim. Tim has been an excellent supporter of the YouTube channel. I can remember in the first few months of talking to Tim and, and saying that nobody was ever going to watch this. So this morning, we hit 70,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel. Uh, 70,000 smart drivers here on the channel and would like to congratulate and thank everybody for subscribing to the channel and tuning in. That is really awesome. Uh, yes, Manish, I'll try and speak a bit slower here, but sometimes it gets a bit crazy. Penny Penny, how are you? And thank you, Tim. Kells, how can I do a perfect parallel park with cones for my driver's test? Kells, Kells Buyer, um, Corey will get the video up for you on how to parallel park with cones, and that will help you out. People started school two to three weeks ago. Where did, uh, some people in college, yes, are starting uh, school hall phase, but uh, schools, public schools, haven't started. At least not here in British Columbia. Maybe some other people have started in other provinces and other states a bit earlier if you uh, are starting school here uh, one of the public schools earlier in one of the states or provinces and it's a bit earlier let let us know about that as well uh, let us know where you're from and 808 blessed one is here from Hawaii congratulations thank you so much on that Christian hey Rick I just passed my written test all thanks to your videos Christian, you are most welcome, and we're really happy to hear that you got your learners and got that out of the way. That's really great, because now you can get the clocks ticking so you can get your practical test. All awesome. Rashmita, I drove my Chevy Cruze with the parking on for about two minutes at a low speed until I released it. Would this have affected the brakes? No, Rashmita. If you, if you only did it for a couple of minutes, it's not going to hurt at all. Travel and Gaming, hello there. How are you? Siddharth, I have my test coming up in a month and my windshield is a really small crack in the top middle of the windshield. Top middle, it has a diameter of like 
0.75 centimeters, would I still be able to do the test? Yes. And the other thing that I would suggest, Siddharth, is take it to a glass shop and get that fixed. They can fix that inexpensively, probably for less than $50, and then you're not going to have any worries at all, and it's not going to crack your windshield in the time between now and when you take the road test. So I really suggest that you do that. Okay, what else we got here? Uh, elevators, I have a question. How far should I stop when I see a school bus? Uh, when you see a school bus and the school bus is stopped, we're going to talk a little bit more about this tonight. Uh, with the lights flashing, uh, stop about a car length behind the vehicle or in front of the vehicle. Uh, in front of the bus, you probably, um, you know, a couple of car spaces just for the car kids that are going to walk out and around the front of the bus. We'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Uh, <laughs> I'm okay. Could be better since I think I ran a red light. And just remind me, Travel and Gaming, where are you? It's, uh, and I believe your name's Colin, right? <laughs> it's been a busy couple of weeks and I've been really just on the go here. Penny, Penny, I failed my test because school zone speeding, it's supposed to be 15 and I was 20. Yes, sorry about that, Penny, uh, that you weren't successful because you sped in a school zone. Yes. As Penny just pointed out, for those of you who are taking a road test with the coming days of school going back in, uh, you will fail a road test automatically if you speed in a school zone. Know that. So it's imperative that you go out to the test center where you're going to be taking your test. It's imperative that you find out where these school zones are and know that you cannot speed in those zones. And here in British Columbia, we don't we have a start school zone, but we do not have a finish school zone. So know that you have to look for the back of the sign, the pentagon shaped sign, which is the five sided sign that looks like a house. Look for the back of that and that will help you out in knowing when the school zone ends because you have to be able to know when the school zone ends so you can resume uh, the speed of 50 kilometers an hour, 30 miles an hour. Yes, Colin and you're in Calgary. Yes, I, I vaguely remember some of that, so that's really great. Okay, so Justin, you got your license four days ago. That's really great. All about vehicles. There you are. Hello, and it's it's Keenan, <laughs> I believe. Just remind me of that. I'm sorry. I'm trying to remember people's names here, so uh, it's all good. Okay, so um, what do we got here? Jaden, uh, I'm doing my drug and alcohol test for my driver's license, but I'm a little nervous getting on the freeway. Do you have any advice for me? Yes. Uh, driver's license, but a little nervous getting on the freeway. Okay, so the freeway, I can understand your, your fear and anxiety around getting on the freeway because freeways are high speed. But the key to driving well on freeways, okay, first of all, just let me back up for a second in terms of freeways. What I'm going to say about freeways is freeways are the safest roads that we have because there aren't any conventional intersections on these roadways. All the, tra all the traffic is traveling in one direction and there's basically on ramps and off ramps. They're called limited access highways because there's only certain places that you can get on and off the freeway or interstate or motorway depending on where you are in the world. So know that they're relatively safe because all of the traffic is traveling in the same direction and uh, there aren't any conventional intersections or other obstructions and those types of things. Slow moving vehicles aren't allowed on interstates. Bicycles and you know horse drawn animals and those types of things all can't be found on interstates, freeways and motorways. So they're relatively safe. So know that first of all. Yes you are traveling at a higher rate of speed but freeways are safer. The next thing is is that when you're coming out onto the on ramp and onto the acceleration lane be looking for your gap as you're coming out. As one smart driver pointed out to me the other day, that the onus of responsibility for merging is on the person who is merging. Yes, other people, if you communicate well in advance, are going to help you out, but the onus of responsibility, the, the burden of responsibility is on the person who is merging. So as you're coming out on the on-ramp and on the acceleration lane, be looking for your gap. Okay, that's the first thing you need to be doing. As you're looking for your gap, you're beginning to match your speed, either speeding up or slowing down and adjusting your speed to meet that gap. 
And yes, some of the other vehicles will move over for you, but don't count on that. And if there's a large vehicle coming down there and they're in that inside lane and you're going to merge in beside them, adjust your speed so you either go in behind them or go in front of them. So if you're going to go in front of them, that may mean that you're going to hammer down. So you're going to put the fuel pedal right on the floor and you're going to get that vehicle going. It's going to roar and it's going to take off. And all of that needs to be done for you to be able to merge. So, And the other thing that I advocate for new drivers is stay on the acceleration ramp right to the end. You are going to get your vehicle up to speed. And for the purposes of a, a license test, make sure that you're not speeding. You're not exceeding the posted speed limit. So if there is a large vehicle in that lane on the inside, just come in behind that vehicle and that way you're going to be all right. And as well, communicate early. Put your signal on as early as you can. That way you're going to be able to get over and other people will help you out as much as possible. All right. Okay, there was one other thing. Hall phase, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Boulder City started in Nevada. Uh, Hall phase, that didn't make any sense. It says uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, and Boulder City started in Nevada, started school. Uh, okay, uh, maybe you can clarify that for me down here at the bottom. Okay, Christopher. Uh, Christopher, my question is if driving permit is expired, will it be allowed to do a road test? No, you will not be able to do a road test, Christopher. You have to redo your learner's permit. Okay, uh, AML work passed uh, my license a, year, uh, a month ago. Congratulations on that. Thanks so much for letting us know. And uh, that is really awesome. Do you have any, where did you pass your road test? And are you planning any, um, any road trips to celebrate that success? Really great. Christopher, another question. What are easy tips for passing a road test? Okay, Christopher, the question uh, that everybody asks, and for those of you watching on the replay, this is the answer that you're looking for in terms of passing a road test. There's four fundamental components to a road test. Communication, observation, speed management, and space management. Those are the four fundamental components of any road test, any class of license, anywhere in the world. Okay, so speed management is number one. You have to do either the flow, the speed, sorry, you have to do the speed limit, the flow of traffic, or the capability of the vehicles, whichever is less. So if you're driving a larger vehicle and you're going uphill, it's not going to be able to do the, the posted speed limit. So whatever the capability of the vehicle is. So most of the time, posted speed limit or flow of the traffic. All right. Next one is space management. For space management, you have to follow at a two to three second following distance. And Corey will put the video up there for you on how to determine following distance. You have to stop at the correct position at a stop sign intersection or other controlled intersection before the stop line, before the crosswalk or sidewalk, and be where the two roads meet if there isn't a crosswalk line or a stop sign line. All right, and then you have to stop so you can see the tires of the vehicle in front of you making clear contact with the pavement when you're stopped in traffic. That's space management. Communication, you have to communicate effectively with other traffic about your intentions. Remember, signals are to tell other drivers that you wish to move over, not that you are moving over. So you have to communicate effectively. As well, the ways that we communicate, signals, light, horn. Horn is usually aggressive, so just a light tap on the horn if you're trying to communicate with somebody else via your horn. Hand gestures, make sure it's all five fingers. Don't tell other drivers they're number one, on, especially on a road test because it incurs road rage. And then finally, the position of your vehicle on the roadway indicates what you're doing to other traffic. If you're in the right-hand turning lane or the slip lane, it's you're gonna, good chance you're going to turn right. If you're in the left-hand turning lane, good chance you're going to turn left. So position of your vehicle. As well, the other thing about communication and for advanced road trips, and I was thinking about this the other day, and I should just reiterate this for you. Know that traffic is slowing down, and you know that it's slowing down because the spaces between the vehicles get closer to, together. As the spaces between the vehicles in the traffic get closer together, they're slowing down. The final component for a road test is observation. You have to be able to observe well and predict traffic patterns or read traffic patterns and then predict what individual vehicles are going to be doing. So you have to observe. You have to have a scanning pattern in place and Corey will get that video up for you on speed control. That scanning pattern is buried in that video. So far down the road, check your center mirror. Far down the road, check your uh, wing mirrors far down the road, check your instrument panel down the road and out to the shoulder. So you just have this rolling scanning pattern. Anytime that you're doing reverse maneuvers or parking the vehicle, you have to do a 360 degree scan and you have to look directly out the back window when you're backing up. And again, I'll just reiterate the video on reversing says you can take your seatbelt off. For the purposes of the road test, leave your seatbelt on for the duration of the video. That, was, that video was an error in that video. 
observation so what else and you have to shoulder check you have to shoulder check twice every time you turn and every time you move the vehicle laterally or lane change that is imperative you do not shoulder check twice for every time you move the vehicle laterally or turn or park you're going to fail your road test so make sure that you are uh, doing shoulder checks so again just to reiterate the four components of any road test regardless of class speed management, space management, observation, communication. That's what you need to do for the purposes of being successful on a road test. Okay, there we go. All right, so Christopher, Penny Penny, poor judgment. How can I improve judgment in traffic? Penny, one of the ways that you can improve your judgment in traffic is to look farther down the road and try to interpret traffic patterns and try and predict what individual road users are going to be doing as you're moving down the roadway hall phase i meant las vegas and boulder city started oh so you started school already okay perfect excellent lexi i don't know if you remember me but i passed my road test two days ago i was the only one that had two instructors grading me <laughs> where lexi did you do your road test that you had two instructors grading you that's uh, that sounds really good and really great that you did pass that uh, Christopher, another question. What time is it good for a road test? Uh, when you are the sharpest, Christopher, if you're an early morning person, I would suggest you do it early in the morning. If you're more of an afternoon person, then I would suggest you do it in the afternoon. It, you know, it could be whatever works for you uh, and when you feel that you're going to be, uh, you're going to be, be at your best ability for that road test, okay? Uh, that ever happened during a career as an instructor, a student give another driver the number one finger. <laughs> no, it isn't. But we used to have a driving instructor that I worked with that, you know, used to say, be nice and wave to other people and make sure that, you know, wave with all five fingers. So, you know, I just continue with the kind of the humor of that hand gesture. Uh, searching for knowledge. Thanks for the knowledge. You are most welcome, my friend. And if, and just as a reiteration here, if, uh, for those of you watching on the replay, for those of you watching tonight, if you like what you see here, Give a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already. Uh, please do consider subscribing to the channel and all of that helps us out. So I said today and as well the other thing that I didn't mention today is that today is the one year anniversary of when I started live streaming. It was a year ago today that I started live streaming. It's, it's just been incredible that it's been one year, 52 weeks of live streaming and it's been really incredible that you know, now we're getting 50, 60 people on a live stream. So it's, it's really great that we can help with people. And Laura, happy Sunday to you as well, Laura. Uh, it's really great. And uh, oh, okay, there we go, Hall Phase. I finally got it, I finally clicked in. So you know that in uh, Boulder City and in Las Vegas, they have started public school in those places. Okay, thank you. I finally got it clear. <laughs> it only took you three comments before I kind of tuned into that. All right, so going back to what I was saying, uh, so today has been the one year anniversary. Today also we uh, hit 70,000 subscribers and thank you to all the smart drivers that have made that possible. And as well, today we've also launched the 100,000 uh, smart drivers campaign. So uh, what we're going to do is in the next year, starting today, 26 uh, August 2018, in between now and 26 August 2019, we're going to help 100,000 drivers uh, earn their license. And we want 100,000 drivers to come to the uh, website, tell us that they passed, fill out the little form, and just hit the thank you button. Or if you want to make a donation, we're going to donate to crash victims. We're going to start a fund to get uh, equipment for people with disabilities to help them to learn how to drive or driver training and we're also going to start some education funds as well so this is it's all sort of in the uh, beginning phases we're getting it up and we're getting it working here and what I'll basically I'll just show you the website here I'll just skip over to this just bear with me for one sec here okay so you can see this is the smart drive test page here and we'll put this up and make this knowledge I'll make a video on it and again Tim has been working on this and I would like to thank Tim for this and, I, and you can't see it because I haven't transitioned to it. So here you go. So Tim has been working on this. This is the page over at the Smart Drive Test website. Uh, SmartDriveTest.com, contacts, donation. And congratulations, Smart Drivers. And you just fill out your name here, your city, where you pass, your country, uh, and put your email. If you'd like to leave a little comment here, you can leave a comment. 
and you can just say thank you or you can leave a donation and as I said that money that is donated a large percentage of that is going to go to helping uh, people with disabilities to learn how to drive uh, crash victims and finally to scholarships for driver education and those types of things so all of that is there and all of that is available and we're gonna get that up and, and I'll make a video when we officially launch that today is just kinda of the soft launch of this program so there we go alright so that's the hundred thousand program okay there we go and so anybody who has any suggestions about that or can help us out with that that would be really great and want you to head over to the smart drive test website and like I said we're going to put up a video a specific video and we're gonna run an advertising campaign to promote that and all those types of things okay um, the Royal Rooter I see a hundred thousand subscribers in your near future yes <laughs> I'm thinking that I might be able to hit that before the end of the year uh, Royal and what I'm gonna do is yeah we're gonna get the plaque the hundred thousand plaque here and that's gonna be really great so alright Colleen any tips for an 845 road test yes get up as early as you can Colleen do a pre-trip inspection or do a pre-trip inspection on your vehicle the night before make sure everything's working because you don't want to be denied your seatbelt because there's a there's a license plate missing or a light out or whatnot so make sure you do that as well make sure you have everything set out the night before you know you have your ID your clothes those types of things so that way you can just get in the car and, and go and do your road test and not be kind of stressed out if morning's not your time okay uh, elevators uh, this is going to be awesome thank you so much penny penny how to check DMV required blind spots check before leaving the curb but in the road test they minus my points um, well simply penny you when you're leaving the curb mirror signal shoulder check so you got a shoulder check signal check the mirror and then start to pull out and then just before you pull out again you got to do another shoulder check so again that comes back to what I was saying about observation for the purposes of the road test anytime that you pull out from a curb anytime you move the vehicle laterally or anytime that you're turning shoulder check twice so once before you're ready to go and you turn your signal on and then as you start moving out you just get the nose of the car out and then just before you pull out into traffic you shoulder check again and check the mirror and then you proceed so that's what you need to do okay uh, there we go Laura I will show my support and donate thank you so much Laura that's really great and for anybody watching on the replay again head over there check that out and if you want to donate that's really great okay so Tim has the URL this is in beta okay so this really doesn't apply to people who received their license last year right Rick uh, well if if people want to come over and tell us that they passed in the last year yeah we can do that as well so okay hall face have many how have many people hit a hundred thousand subscribers now here's don't quote me on this hall face but I think this is the statistic 96 percent of YouTube channels are less than 1,000 subscribers so if you're more than a thousand subscribers on a YouTube channel you are in the top four percent of youtubers uh, working on this platform and speaking of 1,000 subscribers my good friend Tim here on basic Joomla tutorials just last week hit a thousand subscribers and I would like to congratulate Tim on that uh, because I think I kinda motivated Tim a little bit to get going and doing his tutorials on YouTube and Tim has consistently been doing maintenance Monday on how to maintain Joomla websites and hit a thousand subscribers last week and I would like to congratulate Tim on that success that's really great uh, so there you go so Tim uh, if people are trying to make a com comment or working on the donations page there on the 100,000 K campaign uh, Tim at cybersalt.com he's got his uh, he's got his email address there Tim at cybersalt.com and that would really help us out so congratulations to Tim from Corey congratulations from Hall phase that's really great alright so Sebastian that doesn't apply to people who received their license last year right Rick yeah so Sebastian yeah, we're gonna start it today on the 26th of August I just made an executive decision <laughs> sometimes we get caught out on that but we're, I'm gonna make an executive decision and anybody from today forward who has passed a road test goes over and tells us they're going to be included in the hundred thousand drivers that we're gonna help pass the road test hundred thousand smart drivers 
uh, who pass the road test in the next year and they're all going to go to that campaign and we're going to hit that 100,000 mark of helping people out. So congratulations, Anita. Hi there. Congratulations from Colin in Calgary. Sebastian, I'm watching him right now. There we go. Uh, Quentin, I think, um, Sebastian, you guys are friends. You guys are mates. That's really great. So thank you so much for that. Okay, uh, Jaden, I have this funny thought in my mind. So if I had my driver's license and visited Utah and go on emergency calls, what I have to do uh, very fast, like all emergency responders. <laughs> uh, well, I'm not sure what you'd be doing in Utah, Jaden, but yes, I think you'd be needing to do that. Uh, Colin, you had to wash the dishes. That's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before before I came on the live stream, I was helping my kids make the bed. So yeah, we life gets in there. All right, so let's just head over here. Um, okay, so hall phase. Uh, I can't answer that question specifically. How many people in Canada, and the United States, get driver's licenses? But I do know hall phase that we have somewhere around sixty thousand new driver's license just in British Columbia alone. So it is more. It is way more than 100,000. There's there's a lot of people getting a driver's license during the course of the year. All right, so let's just head over here. Just bear with me for one sec while I get the PowerPoint presentation up, because these are kind of visual. Because I want to visit the signs here. So we're going to talk a little bit about school signs here, and just bear with me for one sec. Let's just get this going here. There we go. Okay, so transition. So school signs. So let's just let's head over here. Okay, school signs. So this is the first school sign that you're going to encounter. This is Pentagon. It has two people on the sign and it can be different colors depending on where you are, which state you're in or which province you're in. And this indicates that there is a school in the area and you can tell because there's two people and the way that I remember that is when two vowels go walking, one does the talking. Remember that from that little rhyme from uh, high, from elementary school and we we're all in elementary school so these can I've seen them blue I've seen them neon green I've seen them yellow so this sign just indicates that there is a school in the area so it's not an actual school speed zone sign these are different okay this is a crosswalk sign this means that it tells you that there's a crossing in and around a school and again two people on the sign and this was back when I first started my videos and uh, <laughs> so this is me out in the bright Okanagan Sun. All right, so this is a school speed zone sign, and this is the Pentagon sign with a, with a maximum 30 kilometers an hour underneath it. For those of you in the United States, this is going to be 20 miles an hour or 15 miles an hour, depending, and the, and the speed zones vary a little bit. So pay attention to the rectangular regulatory sign underneath, which means that you must obey that speed limit. Okay, so this is the actual school speed zone sign and you must obey that sign especially if you're on a road test because if you don't obey this sign and the speed limit on a road test it's an automatic fail so make sure you pay attention to that as well for those of us here in British Columbia they don't actually have an end school zone speed sign so you have to look for the back of the other sign uh, to know when the end of the school zone is so you need to be aware of that so just look for the back of the Pentagon sign all right and then here is one that is not so popular they're beginning to be phased out but speed limit 15 miles an hour when children are present on the roadway so the only time that you need to do the speed is if you see children in and around the area where you're driving otherwise you just resume normal speeds which is 50 kilometers an hour here in Canada or 30 miles an hour in the United States and other places in the world but if there are children present then you need to reduce speed but for the most part like I said these are being phased out and are less less common okay and then finally the end school zone as I was saying that earlier uh, on school days when children are present is 20 miles an hour if there aren't school children present you don't have to do 20 miles an hour do 30 miles an hour and then look for the end school zone signs if you don't have end school zone signs uh, you need to look for the back of the other sign on the other end of the school zone. So that's how you know. And then finally, school buses. With school going into session, school buses are going to come out and they have stop sign them, signs on them. And I had one of the smart drivers just ask me how far back. If you're behind the bus, stop just back a vehicle length. If you're in front of the bus, you want to stop back probably a couple of lengths, uh, car lengths away from the school bus because 
that y little yellow gate will come out and that forces the children out farther in front of the bus so that they can be seen in the mirrors by the drivers and you want to stop back so you're not going to interfere with children traveling or crossing the road and crossing in front of the school bus and as well you can see this sign here this is going to indicate that there are school buses in the area so if you're traveling in those areas between 7 and 9 in the morning or 2 and 5 in the afternoon know that they're is likely going to be school buses on the roadway and you need to be on the lookout for them and they're going to be more prevalent uh, at those times and they're going to be prevalent in and around cities and around schools and those types of things so be on the lookout for those and keep our kids safe while you're traveling to and from school so if you have any questions about that we can answer that I'm gonna head back here uh, just bear with me one sec transition back here there we go and get back over there alright so any questions you have Okay, so Colin, do you teach EVAC for emergency responders? No, I actually don't teach that course hall phase, but it's something down the road that I'll get into. Okay, why not have a quiz at the end of every stream? Ah, uh, that's a good idea, hall phase. I should or maybe do that one day. Uh, Yudawandi. Yudawadi. There we go. Sorry about that. Happy one year anniversary. You succeed with 100,000 subscribers like you always say. You're going to succeed in the road test to all students. And thank you for that encouragement. That's really great. And <laughs> yes, it's it's been almost three years, and it's going to be really great to, to hit that milestone for sure. Uh, so thank you so much for that. So uh, again, for those of you watching on the replay, if you're new to Smart Drive Test, give it a thumbs, give the video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing to the channel, especially if you're working towards a road test. And again, just we had some big milestones today. This morning we hit 70,000 smart drivers, 70,000 subscribers on the channel. It's the one year anniversary for live streaming. And as well, we today, uh, 26th of August, 2018, between now and 2019, 26th August, uh, we are moving to help 100,000 smart drivers earn their license. And we're going to keep track of that on the Smart Drive Test website. And we're going to start promoting that when we get that up and we're officially launched. I'm uh, going to start doing some advertising. I'll do a video. I'll show you how that works and you can make a donation. And those donations are going to go towards helping people with disability to learn to drive, whether that's equipment or training. We're also going to help crash victims and we're going to have scholarships for driver training uh, for people who may have disabilities or people who are embarking on CDL careers and just helping general traffic safety overall. So that's what we're going to be doing uh, with that money that is donated uh, from smart drivers who pass their license. So that's really great. Okay, uh, school zones, just be very careful. Yes, and know where schools are. And the other thing, and I've said this to you before, be familiar with the test route around the testing center where you're going to be taking your test and know where schools are. Do not get caught out uh, because you can drive in and around the testing center. Yes, I know that lots of places you can't go into the test center itself, but you can drive on the roads in and around the test centers. As well, as I said, and I counsel all smart drivers, when you're practicing to take your test and it's a few days before your test, make sure that you book a practice driving test with a driving instructor. Most driving schools, these are inexpensive. They're only about a half an hour. The driving instructor will take you out on the roads where you're going to be tested in and around the driving center and they will evaluate your driving skills for the purposes of passing a road test. So know that. And they're going to say, yes, you're ready for your road test or no, you're not ready for your road test. So it's invaluable. And Sam, who's not here tonight, but Sam, who works for Rookie Auto Driving School in the Bronx in New York City there, says that it's only about $20, $25 to take a practice driving test. So it's really good investment of a few dollars and a bit of time, and you're going to get feedback on your abilities and skills in preparation to taking a road test. Okay, Siddharth. Okay, you asked me a question. Uh, where did the question go? Okay, so you're talking about convex mirrors. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, Siddharth, I can't find the other comment there about what you were asking me for uh, convex mirrors. Uh, okay, hall phase. Why don't they require drivers to stop for public transit buses? Uh, the reason for that hall phase, and this is going to be an academic answer for you, is, is that school buses move to protect the pedestrians on, or the passengers on the bus, which are school children, right? 
transit buses generally tend to be ridden by adults, not children. If there are children on the school on the transit bus, rather, uh, they're going to be accompanied by adults. Uh, the reason we don't have to stop for transit buses is because we're trying to facilitate traffic flow within cities. So we have things like designated bus stops and we have bus bays and we have specific uh, transit depots where these buses pull into and they do not block traffic. And that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to facil <laughs> facilitate traffic and that's why we don't have to stop for transit buses as well. Transit buses generally only let passengers out on the curb and that so that's what happened okay uh <laughs> hall phase is trolling no hall phase is keen he hall phase is keen okay um let's see Jaden. uh hey rick when i get a job as a school bus driver then my bus overheats what do i do okay so Jaden, what you have to do if you're driving a school bus with children on your school bus is you need to try to get off the road as much as possible to a safe place and unfortunately, if you don't have a safe place to let the children out, like a sidewalk or some other place where you can't control them and you don't have anybody else to help you, you're going to have to have them stay on the bus. I've had that happen to me on a, a Greyhound coach where the coach broke down in the middle of the road. I couldn't let the passengers off the, off the bus because it was just too dangerous for the passengers. As well, when you take your driver training to become a school bus driver, they're going to train you about what to do for passenger safety because remember, when you're driving a bus, passenger safety is your number one priority. You always need to be thinking in your head, is this safe for my passengers? Okay, so keep that in mind when you're driving a school bus. Um, Camille, kindly explain more about blind spots. Uh, 90 degree angle or beyond. Okay, so Camille, what you're talking about in terms of blind spots, when you shoulder check, you simply look at 90 degrees. So you turn your head 90 degrees, and it's a quick turn of 90 degrees because in a healthy adult, Camille, is we have 180 degrees of peripheral vision. So if you hold your hands like this, you can see your hands at 90, 180 degrees in a healthy adult. So essentially what's happening is when you turn your head 90 degrees, you are able to look a good distance that way. And our peripheral vision is attracted to light and movement, and that's essentially what you're doing. Our central focus, which is about this much at arm's length, if our peripheral vision picks something up, it pulls in our central vision. So when you turn your head 90 degrees like this, or 90 degrees this way, you're simply looking for another road user, a pedestrian, a person on a bicycle, motorcycle, or something like that, that may be in your blind spot. And that's simply why you're shoulder checking 90 degrees. It's only 90 degrees because your peripheral vision is going to pick up more than that. And you need to do it two times every time you move the vehicle laterally or any time that you turn. So know that for the purposes of a road test. Okay. Uh, bye bye. There's Sam. So driving lessons by Big Mac Sam BMS. That is Sam. And we were just talking about you, Sam, talking about the practice driving test that I counsel students to take in preparation for the road test. Uh, Millie is here. Uh, what is your opinion about putting your hazard lights on when about to park? I got into a debate with another driver putting your hazard lights on when about to park, and they disagreed. Uh, Millie, it depends what you're doing. Uh, a lot of times, simply putting your vehicle into reverse when you're going to park is going to activate your reverse lights, and if it activates your reverse lights, most drivers are going to know that you're backing up. That's in a passenger vehicle. Now, if you're driving a larger vehicle like an RV or you're backing up a trailer, which you won't be able to see the reverse lights on the vehicle because the trailer doesn't have those, or you're driving a bus or a tractor trailer unit, then yes, I absolutely advocate putting on hazards for reversing. In a passenger vehicle, not so much because your reverse lights come on and other road users can see those. But if you have anything bigger than that or you're towing a trailer, then yes, absolutely, I advocate putting your hazards on to back up. Okay? Uh, 380, driving at an elevated speed in a manner that is unusual leads motors to act very erratically. You must anticipate and respond on a split second notice as well as actually getting to the call. Yes, that is very true, JFS 380. And the other thing that's important, 380, about emergency lights on emergency vehicles, uh, police, fire, ambulance, search and rescue, those lights are only a request for the right of way. They do not give you the right of way in some situations. So you're going to have to, there's a fair, a lot of discretion on the part of emergency responders when they're responding to an emergency call. So if you get into a crash, 
the, simply the fact that you had the lights on, as you know, is not necessarily going to cover you in the event of a crash. So know that it's only a request for the right of way. It doesn't actually give you the right of way. You still have to um, execute due diligence when you're doing your job. Okay. Yudawadi, uh, how do you avoid staying in the wrong lane? Many times the current straight lane is sudden change to the left or right lane only, and it's hard for me to change lanes without crossing a solid white line. Okay, so Yudawadi, what you have to do is you have to look farther down the road, and you have to pay attention to the specific bits of information that are going to help you do that. So as you're looking farther down the road, you're looking for the road signs that are indicating that the lane is going to end, the lane is going to exit, or whatnot. The other thing that will help you out, Yudawati, if you're driving in cities that have more than two lanes, you want to drive in the center lane because the center lane is generally going to be the straight through lane. The left lane is often going to turn left or the right lane is often turn right and they're going to be slowing down and they're going to be impeding traffic and those types of things. So I always tell students, stay in the center lane if there's more than two lanes. Okay, but again, you got to be looking farther down the road. You got to be reading the road signs and you got to be anticipating what other traffic is doing because oftentimes, if the lane ends or exits other traffic, you're going to be able to see other traffic doing that. So, have a look at the other traffic and see what they're doing. Okay, and again, just to reiterate here in the middle of the live stream, if you're new to Smart Drive Test and you like what you see here, give the video a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel. And as well, leave a comment or share the information. All that helps out smart drivers and helps them to pass their license and be successful in their bid to get their license or start a career as a truck or bus driver and remain crash free while they're driving. Okay. Uh, Mosin, uh, I have a question about the quick stop on the road test. Do you have to look up the ABS or do you have to stop as quickly as possible without the ABS? Uh, Mosin, essentially you don't have to use the ABS because you got to press pretty hard to get the ABS to kick in. So you just, it's a hard break and trying to get the vehicle over and stop as quickly as possible because I think what you're talking about there is you're talking about the emergency stop that they make you do in Ontario. Uh, just trying to get the vehicle off the road as quickly as possible. Yeah, it's a really hard break but not hard enough to engage the uh, ABS. Uh, hall phase, do you think, is there anything I can do if the school bus driver blasts his music and there are regulations against that? Uh, not so much, and most school bus drivers aren't going to blast music. <laughs> 380, blue, green, yellow, they ignore them all the same. Yes, they do, 380, I know. And, and you know, sometimes they don't think it's conscious that they, uh, that our emergency responders are ignored. I think a lot of times, especially for some drivers, older drivers and those people who have hearing disabilities, it's difficult to locate where the, where the emergency vehicles are. I know myself, when I'm driving an emergency vehicles approach, I mean, I'm usually fairly aware of what's around me in terms of my driving environment, but when it comes to emergency vehicles and I hear the sirens and I'm kind of taken off guard, Sometimes I find it quickly find it difficult to quickly locate where the emergency vehicle is. I mean, I am watching in my mirrors and those types of things, but I think for some people, I think they're just kind of overwhelmed a little bit, and it's difficult for them to locate where they are. It's not that they're being malicious or they're mindfully saying to themselves, well, I'm going to cut off the emergency vehicle. I think some people genuinely have difficulty locating emergency vehicles. Excuse me. Uh, Colin. If you want to learn how to drive code response, check with your local police training department because it requires some in-depth training. Yes, for sure. That's exactly right, Colin. Okay. Uh, Bricks for you. Uh, Corey, I saw a video of an ambulance crashing in an intersection. It was technically the ambulance's fault as it went straight through without stopping. And yes, Corey, if it did go straight through the intersection without stopping and had lights flashing, then it would be the ambulance driver's fault because as I said, the lights are simply a request for the right of way and it's their responsibility to ensure that the intersection is clear before proceeding. So if they had a crash, it's a good chance that they're going to be held liable for that. Uh, Jaden, uh, when me and my mom went to her house, we almost got into a car crash with another driver. Uh, we had a green light on and the other driver had the green light and he almost hit us. What should I do? Yeah, somebody, Jaden, has to give right of way. So that's what you need to do. If you gave right of way, then you did the right thing because you avoided being involved in a crash. Okay? All right. Um, uh, 
Oh, no, you cannot ride uh, dirt bikes on public roadways, hall phase, unless they're licensed and they have signals on them. So you, they have to be licensed. You can't drive them on public roads. Okay, uh, Malcolm, I think, uh, thank you for your videos. Focus me to get my license. I keep watching your videos, which motivate me so I can be on the road soon. Excellent. We're glad we're helping out there, Malcolm. That's really great that we can help out with you getting your license. Uh, speaking of emergency responders, I had a cop follow me and all of a sudden turned his lights on and pulled and pulled me over and he took off and it took me by surprise uh yeah sometimes <laughs> sometimes colin what happens is, is that they're coming after you for speeding or some other traffic infraction and then they get called out for a more serious uh you know bank robbery or something else and they will leave you alone at that juncture so yeah it's a, it gets your heart pumping at that at that part okay 380 uh thank you I yep okay excellent Royal I'm an EMT and I can definitely attest that a lot of people are simply unaware and yes I know uh, Royal because <laughs> I mean I watch other people drive because this is what I do for a living right and I am fascinated by people uh, especially when people become drivers and if you haven't seen the video already of Mr. Wheeler and Mr. Walker go over to my biography on my smart drive test website and the Disney animated video is there and it shows the transformation for when people are walking to when people become drivers and that sort of selfish uh, you know road rage attitude that people have so I'm fascinated by people and yes there are a lot of people who definitely are just unaware when they're driving their vehicles and it's it's interesting to see those types of people okay Nicholas off topic but I go slower in residential areas on my test do they have the right of uh, right to fail me uh, Nicholas, it depends. I wouldn't go too slow in residential areas, but you can go slower. If you're on a narrow residential street and there's lots of parked cars on both sides, then yes, you are justified in going slower. Same thing as if you are near a strip mall or you're near a mall and there's high pedestrian traffic and lots of cyclists and lots of other activity, then yes, you can go a bit slower. But don't go too slow if you're on kind of a, you know, main thoroughfare through a residential area make sure that you're going up as much as you can as close to the speed limit or because you can fail a road test for going too slow and being too careful so know that for the purposes of a road test that you need to be up to speed as quickly as possible so just reiterate reiterating in terms of speed management the posted speed limit the flow of traffic or the capability of the vehicle whichever is less so know that for the purposes of a road test uh, Okay, Corey, on my test doing that, going slower than you should is a minor error. Ten minor errors are allowed from Winnipeg. Yep, okay, so there you go. And yes, they are going to ding you for going too slow. <laughs> yes, uh, travel and gaming, that's why emergency responders now have howlers or in Calgary, which, do, which will vibrate your car so it makes you self-conscious of what's going on. Yeah, and they're making these louder, and I'm not sure whether they're getting better because they're getting louder. And I've, I've seen some, uh, some controversy around this where they're trying to get them directional. They're trying to figure out how they can emit the sound so that it warns drivers of which direction it's coming from to try and improve that for uh, emergency responders. Maybe what we can do is we can do a whole live stream on this of talking about emergency vehicles, how to, re how to react to emergency vehicles and those types of things because it's been a fairly good discussion here tonight about emergency vehicles and the right of way and those types of things so uh, and Sam said it's 15 points for going too slow here in New York and Sam what are some of the places that you find are most common for students to go too slow on the road test so yes and it's a how many points is it Sam is it is it 50 40 or 50 points for a road test that you're unsuccessful on a road test so if you get a couple of these going too slows I mean, all of a sudden, that's 30 points. You're you're fairly on the margin of not being successful on a road test, so know that. Okay. Uh, Colin, uh, okay, so Jaden, when I see drivers run through red lights, uh, speeding, or get in a car crash, or in a road rage incident, should I help the police and help the accident as well because I am trained first aid? Uh, definitely you can Jaden help other people and it's always a good thing to do to try and help other people especially if people are injured and those types of things but you're not obligated to do that okay but you know 
you and I being the people they are, we definitely would help people out and do that. Okay. Uh, Corey, it may also be a good question for the examiner before the test starts. There we go. Okay. Colin, a whole live stream on emergency responders would be awesome. I'd love it. Awesome. Okay, 380, our engine that has the rumbler, the lower wave punch into more insulated passenger vehicles. After we installed us, there was a more definitive reaction. Okay, so the rumbler. Um, and 380, what kind of decibels would that thing be putting out? Or is it the fact that it's not louder, but it's also, it's got some sort of vibration going through it? I mean, what is, I mean, you, those of you in the engine would have to be wearing some sort of ear protection, would you not? I would think so. Uh, okay, so there you go. So Sam's just saying that it's 35 points is being a fail or being unsuccessful on a road test there in the Bronx. And so if you've got two going too slow in fractions on a road test, that's pretty much it. You're pretty much done at that point on your road test. You're not going to be successful. So again, one of the things that I reiterate to students and really hammer home when I'm teaching them how to drive, and I know Sam does the same thing, is get the vehicle up to speed as quickly as possible. As quickly as possible, get it up to the posted speed limit and drive the posted speed limit or the flow of traffic, whichever is less. Okay, so that's what you need to do for the purposes of your road test and being successful. Okay, uh, Mosin, for the backing portion of the road test, do you have to turn the, vehicle, turn the wheel a little or no? Okay, so when you're backing up Mosin, you just simply need to move the, the steering wheel. So if you're driving, if you're backing in a straight line, you may have to do a bit of adjustment, but for the most part, you don't have to adjust the steering wheel. You're gonna have to adjust a lot. And again, what I would suggest to you Mosin is, Corey will get the video up here for you on how to learn to drive and practice those slow speed maneuvers uh, before you go out and start getting ready for your road test because that'll help you out. Okay, Colin, fire truck drivers and firefighters do wear headphones. I have been on a ride along with the Calgary Fire. Okay, awesome. 380, it's the same sound as the electronic siren. Same decibels, about 100 or so at 10 meters. It's the frequency get, that gets the reaction. Okay, okay, so it's at a particular frequency. All right, so we're getting up near the end here. So if anybody has any questions, uh, definitely leave your questions here. I'm more than happy to help you out. So again, we're talking tonight, we talked about back to school, school zone signs. Know that the Pentagon sign warns you of a school in and around the area. School zone signs for the purpose of road test, do not speed in a school zone sign when it's 30 kilometers an hour or 20 miles an hour because you will fail. It is an automatic fail on a road test. School crossing signs, all of these school signs have two people on them, okay? Remember, just to, re to re repeat here, recap, signs convey information through three means, the, the, the shape of the sign, the colors of the sign, and the symbols and letters that are there on the sign. So school crossing signs have two people on them. It's a crosswalk in front of a school, and then there are uh, a speed limit when children are present. So if there's only children present, then you do the reduced speed limit. Otherwise, you can do the normal speed limit. And then finally, school buses are going to be out coming with the coming of school starting. Stop signs, if you're behind this, this, the bus, generally they're going to have orange amber lights. They're going to warn you that the bus is about to come to a stop. The stop sign will come out, the red lights will flash, and the cattle guard, that's what that gate's called at the front, it's called the cattle guard. So if you're behind the bus, stop back about a length. If you're in front of the bus, stop about two vehicle lengths back and keep safe and as well in and around where school buses are going to be traveling there are going to be some warning signs that will tell you that there are school buses in and around the area so know about that and just refresh yourself if you haven't seen the school signs in a while or you're confused by them then have a look at those and just brush up on those all right uh Siddharth uh, I don't want to annoy others can you please answer my question oh Siddharth I'm sorry uh, can you just put it down there again, Siddharth, because uh, unfortunately I've lost the question, so I missed it. I, I apologize. Yeah, it's not, it's not that I'm ignoring your questions. It's just that when we get 40 plus people on the live stream, the questions come through pretty quickly, and sometimes I miss the question. So just re, uh, repost it there, and I'll, I'll be sure to answer that for you. Okay, Nicholas... And it is 50 for residential. Yes. So, Nicholas, just to reiterate, and it's not just British Columbia, but anywhere in Canada, 
The posted uh, the, the posted speed limit is 50 kilometers an hour in cities unless otherwise posted. It's 80 kilometers an hour on highways unless other po otherwise posted. And in the United States, it's 30 miles an hour unless otherwise posted. And it's 50 miles an hour on highways unless otherwise posted. So know that. Okay. Uh, Edgar, what car brand would you recommend as a starter car? So Edgar, two starter car vehicles that I would recommend would either be a Honda Civic or a Toyota Corolla. I know that there are other vehicles out there as well that are good and those types of things. But I really recommend it, as Blessed said here, Toyota is a, is a good car to start with and a Honda is a good car. I have a 1998 Honda CRV that now has 322,000 kilometers on it, which is uh, 200,000 miles, and it still runs really well, and I really enjoy driving it, so it's been a long-lasting car. So you can, you can pick up a pre-owned one, and they're still high-quality vehicles, okay? So... Uh, Royal, so going slow in residential neighborhoods is situational for the gentleman that asked early if I would recommend going the speed limit and if you see any potential hazards, cover the brake. Yes, that's excellent advice, uh, Royal, there. And Chronic uh, talked about a Nissan for a starter car. Those are also decent vehicles as well. Okay, so Colin suggests a Honda. Uh, so lots of good vehicles there, Edgar, for starter vehicles. Okay. Uh, all right, so these are here, and okay, Maxim, what do you do for the hazard perception part of the test, and what are my examiners looking for? So hazard perception, essentially what they're doing, Maxim 777, is that they're looking that you can look down the roadway, and you can predict traffic patterns, you can interpret traffic patterns, and then you can predict what individual road users are going to do, and you're going to be able to determine any potential hazards that could cause harm to your vehicle and that you're going to be able to react accordingly in traffic. That's essentially what hazard perception is. Hazards are anything that is dangerous and could cause harm to you and cause you to be involved in a crash. So that's essentially what they're looking for for the purposes of your road test. Okay, Epic, am I allowed to go 5, 10 plus miles an hour in a school zone or stick to 25 miles an hour? No, uh, Epic, you need to do whatever the posted speed limit is in that school zone. So if it says 20 miles an hour, do 20 miles an hour. Unless, of course, there's students present or they're trying to cross or those types of things. So do whatever the posted speed limit is. Okay, Tommy, I had good luck with Ford Focus as a beginner car. Excellent. So that's another option. Uh, Tommy's had good luck with that. So... <laughs> Lamborghini is yeah I'd like to have a Lamborghini as my starter vehicle too there we go so that's really great or uh, McLaren yes okay so lots of great cars so again if you're watching on the replay and you like what you see here consider subscribing give it a thumbs up share the videos that helps all the smart drivers who are working towards getting their license and give them great information to be successful on the road test and leave a comment and if you have any queries or comments by all means, leave a comment down there or a question, and we'll make sure that we get to that. And I'd like to thank Corey for all his great work. Uh, Rock Boy, my starter car was a Nissan Maxima. I've driven a few others, and nothing has been as smooth as that. So there you go, another Nissan. So congratulations to all the smart drivers who passed their license in the last week. It's been fairly busy with the summertime and people getting ready to go back to school and those types of things, so it's been really great. And for those of you uh, embarking on a road test in the coming week, Good luck on that. If you have any questions at all, leave me a comment. I'll be more than happy to get to the questions and help you out. And thank you for everybody for tuning in tonight and asking questions and participating. It's been really great. And again, if you like what you see here, give it a thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up button. That helps to get all the videos out and ranks me higher in the YouTube search engine. So thank you so much for that. And remember, pick the best answer, not necessarily the right answer. Have a great night. Bye now.